Dax is a rapper who came into the YouTube rap scene at the perfect time. Mumble rap was coming out, and in retaliation, many people flocked to the self-proclaimed lyrical rappers that lived on YouTube. However, that style quickly became very corny, as many music listeners embraced the mumble rappers coming out at the time. The lyrical rappers on YouTube began dying out quickly, but somehow Dax was able to double down on this style, and despite many people thinking it was very corny, he was able to turn that around into a successful career. And this is how he did it. Also, if you like music, make sure to subscribe. I'm going to be posting a video every Sunday at 12 p.m. CST, so feel free to stick around. So I would just, I would use different tactics in order to like prepare myself for the next jump, the next move, all that stuff, so. In 2016, Dax released his first song to YouTube called One Dance Spoken Word. See, Dax had been writing poetry for fun on the side, but after one of his basketball teammates said he liked it, Dax decided to start making music. In late 2016, he continued releasing songs, spoken word, and remixes of other songs like Designer's Timmy Turner. But he really caught his big break in February of 2017 when he released the song Catch Me Outside, which was a play on the popular meme at the time that was started by Danielle Brigoli. This video blew up and is currently sitting at 22 million views. Dax was quickly able to figure out that taking advantage of trendy topics and trending songs was a strength he needed to play to. He started remixing tons of hot songs like Look At Me by XXXTentacion, Mask Off by Future, and Shape of You by Ed Sheeran. His videos are almost like a time capsule of old YouTube, because there's no crazy production or special effects, it's just a guy rapping over someone else's beat on camera. He also released his own original music, but that didn't always do as well. One of the things that really helped Dax garner a fan base was his lyrical ability. Dax was a good rapper, there's no debating that. He could rhyme good and rap fast. But at the time, this style of rap was in high demand, and that's because something else was going on in the mid-2010s. Rappers like Lil Uzi, Lil Yachty, Kodak Black, Playboy Cardi, Lil Pump, and all of those other guys were blowing up in this decade. They made a different style of rap that was much less focused on lyrics and more so focused on the production and overall vibe of the song. This led to a big divide in the rap community, with a lot of people loving it, while a lot of others were upset that rap seemed to be departing from its lyrical roots. Then the term mumble rap began floating around the internet, being used to mock these new artists who weren't real lyricists. And almost in retaliation to the mumble rap era, the lyrical YouTube rapper era was born. To clarify, I'm not talking about people like Jake Paul or Rice Gum. Instead, I'm referring to people like Crypt, Gone, Quideca, Dax, of course, and others like that. There was even a song called Death to Mumble Rap, which I think sums up this era pretty well in and of itself. That's, that's you! That's you! These YouTubers were able to capitalize on people's hunger for real lyricism and fast flows, which led to a ton of new artists blowing up on YouTube. Dax, one of the leading figures in this movement, was able to benefit from the massive amount of attention that scene was receiving. Before corny tracks like Death to Mumble Rap came out, the scene was honestly fun and well received for a while, and right in the middle of it was Dax. He continued releasing music consistently, growing his fan base. He was working with artists like OT Genesis, Futuristic, and Hobson when releasing his original music, and also continued releasing his remixes. Dax was able to use the YouTube algorithm and trends to his advantage to blow up. Or I can do what I gotta do to gain an audience, and once they come to my shit, they'll see that, oh man, this motherfucker is actually talented. So I'm like, okay, hey, you know, this YouTube route is good. I don't wanna be a YouTuber, but I can use my skills to make songs and diss tracks on some of these guys to where the songs still sound like actual songs, but they're diss tracks at the same time. After posting something like a remix or a diss track, he would follow up with his own original music, hoping to get the attention of followers who were into the more trendy stuff. Put out a diss track, I'd throw one of my own songs in there. You know, for example, like people don't understand, like, I Want is a hit song, it's almost got three million views, you know what I mean? So that's like another, you know, hit right there. So I would just, I would use different tactics in order to like prepare myself for the next jump, the next move, all that stuff, so. Dax proceeded to go on a bit of a hot streak with songs like She Cheated Again, Rap God Freestyle, Kill Shot Freestyle, and more, racking in millions of views on every track. He also had a brief back and forth with KSI after they both took a shot at each other in their songs. For a time during the YouTube rapper era, KSI was one of the top dogs, not necessarily because his music was good, but just because he had a big fan base. And when KSI went on a podcast with rapper Randolph and Miniminter, he took some shots at Dax and called him corny. I mean, I guess there's Dax, but like... <laughs> I didn't know him, that's it. I mean, but he's a 
the poor man's Hopsin, <laughs> and Hopsin is the poor man's Eminem. And so Eminem is would... a poor man's Kendrick. Uh, yeah, and, and Eminem's a poor man's Kendrick. So, that, so why that. would <laughs> anyone want to listen to a poor man's poor man, poor man? Like I said, this resulted in them taking some shots at one another, which in reality just helped Dax grow and get more attention. KSI actually clowned on Dax on his channel multiple times putting millions of eyes on Dax, although it was in a bit more of a negative light. It seems like the views got to his head, because in January of 2019, he got into a bit of a beef with the rapper Crypt, which really made people think differently of Dax. And I encourage anybody in that situation to do the same thing. I'm gonna teach my son the same thing, because at the end of the day, man, social media is convincing too many people to act tough when they don't need to. In January of 2019, the song Four Horsemen with Crypt, Dax, Quedeca, and Screw was released. The song has over 4 million views on YouTube and was super popular among fans. But behind the scenes, Dax was acting like he was too good for everyone else on the song. He even sneak dissed them in the song saying, three people on a song with a goat, acting like everyone else was beneath him. It was clear that Dax was becoming full of himself. About a month later, Crypt revealed how Dax was kind of being lazy with his verse and talking behind his back about how whack the song was. It's like, why aren't you saying this song? And the thing that irritates me the most is that he said he didn't like the song or believe in it at all. Even though well, he's telling me in messages that it's fire and that it's legendary, he's excited for the video to drop, send me the song so I can put it in my drive, but then behind my back saying that he doesn't like the song at all, doesn't believe in it, the video and audio is not a quality and all this other shit. It's like, bro, if you don't like the fucking song, tell me. I'm, I'm a man, okay? I am a fucking man. Tell me. This situation really changed people's perspective on Dax. People began to pick up on the lines in his songs that made him seem cocky. Like when he said, I promise I'm gonna be one of the biggest in about a year. I promise I'll win a Grammy. I promise I'll win an Oscar. After becoming one of the largest people in the YouTube rapper scene, he thought he was better than everyone. The lyrical side of the YouTube rapper era culminated, in my opinion, in the YouTube ciphers that were put together by Crypt. These ciphers featured Crypt alongside many other popular YouTube rappers like Randolph, Screw, Mac Lethal, Quedeca, and many more. Even I'm Dante was on one of the tracks back when he was putting out music. And one person that was consistently mentioned in the second one was Dax, dissed by pretty much everyone in the cipher. His reputation had been severely damaged after he switched up on his collaborators and was acting like he was way too good to work with them. He had the whole community against him for a period of time. The YouTube rap scene was small though, and none of them were really involved with mainstream rappers, until Dax decided to take a shot at Tory Lanez. But then, I mean, I don't know who gassed this n up, but he just bit way more than he could chew and decided to go for Tory Lanez. Yes, you heard that right. It's Dax decided to make a diss track on Tory Lanez. It wasn't for no reason because Tory had tweeted out that he was the best rapper alive and that he would body anyone else out. So Dax saw this as a challenge and in February of 2019 released the diss track, I'm not Joyner or Don Q. The diss track was essentially the mantra of the YouTube rap era as Dax was criticizing Tory for not making music about anything of substance. But this didn't sit well with Tory who actually ran into Dax outside of a club and decided to press him, forcing him to apologize. Come here, this shit, or, or this shit's not gonna end, my Or this shit's not gonna end. Apologize, bro. Apologize, bro. Or you know, or you know what's going on. Apologize, my Apologize, I got you, bro. Apologize, man. Say sorry, man. My bad for the Say sorry, man. Sorry, G. All right, bet. I got you. This situation was pretty embarrassing for Dax. He had his pride hurt and was forced to apologize to Tori on camera. They both were later interviewed on this topic, and Dax gave his side of the story. You see me on the car like tired as shit. Right. And so, what was going through your head when he was like telling you to apologize? Because that must this have is felt what like was a, going through my head. And obviously, think you're not really sorry. So that, that's and the first I mean? important thing. This is what's going through my head. I've, I've always told myself like I'm never gonna let social media make me make dumb decisions mm. you know i had done getting hit in the club i had already sprinted a half fucking marathon so i'm like yo i'm tired i'm trying to go home eat and tinder swipe g <laughs> you know what i mean so i'm there i'm just like man shit okay the world wants me to be a be a be a big dude and be like nah fuck you but i'll be like you know what i gotta go home to my family and shit i'm like all right bro my bad mm. say sorry all right bro sorry and then the shit was over right and I encourage anybody in that situation to do the same thing. I'm going to teach my son the same thing. Because at the end of the day, man, social media is convincing too many people to act tough when they don't need to. And the same people that are telling you to 
act tough for the same people who will be saying RIP. The situation was pretty divisive, with many people thinking that Dax was weak for being ordered to apologize on camera, with others saying that Dax was absolutely right in doing so, as in reality, it wasn't much of a big deal. Since Dax wasn't a mainstream artist, many people's only exposure to him was seeing him get pressed by Tori. Not only that, but despite Dax saying he was jumped in interviews, Tori said to DJ Academics that he just randomly saw Dax and that Dax made that story up to seem less weak. So many people thought that Dax was lying about the situation. Following that, he even had Nav calling him corny in a video for Genius. Nah, I can't, nah. I just can't. It's like, come on, bro. This is corny. I think this is the guy that said sorry to Tory Lanez. It looks so familiar. Yeah, it is. He's crying over a girl that left him for another dude. Be your artist, bro. By this point, Dax was a huge artist, but he was also known as a prideful, corny, egotistical rapper. But it wasn't over, as 2019 would be a very rough year for Dax's image. In March of 2019, the YouTuber Progress released a video called Dax stole a Lil Peep verse and more. In the video, he explained how Dax's song Not Tonight featuring Lil Peep was actually stolen from the guy who owned the rights to it. Basically, Dax was trying to get a feature on the song with the guy who owned the rights to it, but said he needed the track with the open to get it cleared by his management. Then he turned around, had the beat remade, changed some stuff around, and posted it as if it was his song featuring Lil Peep, using his death to try to get some extra attention to his channel. He even posted a music video with stolen clips from other Peep videos. Shortly after releasing it though, it was deleted, likely because of copyright or hate, and it was somewhat forgotten about until Progress covered it on his channel. As Blaine told me directly and other screenshots out there from others involved show, Dax begged to be on the song. And this was because he originally had declined because he didn't think Peep mattered at all, but after realizing that he was, he tried to take advantage of it. He even used the I could have been the biggest thing they worked with line on them, just like he did to Dario. Dax also then says that it's somehow bullshit that they told him either he does things properly or they want their 6k for the little peep verse. I don't see how that's bullshit, it's kinda just how things work, Dax. On top of that, in this video, Dax was caught scamming his fans after promising a feature and then not delivering. From the start, the set price was not given. They intentionally told Dario to pay through PayPal friends and family, knowing he wouldn't be able to get purchase protection, wouldn't give the down payment back even though it was not specified that it was non-refundable, pressured him with saying his friends were wrong and that this may be the biggest feature he ever gets, refused to drive less than an hour to sign a contract which was desperately needed at this point, and then tried to get Dario to pay $2,000 without a contract to sign a contract. Following this, Dax just kept the money that the guy already paid him and he never gave him the feature. One fan commented, damn, after Dax was on that track with Hobson, I became a fan. I'm not gonna lie, I wanted to dislike your video at first, but you won me over by the end. Dax is a bad person for real, no longer a fan. This also isn't the only time this has happened as he allegedly stole money from someone a couple years ago, as claimed by a guy on Reddit, with other people in the comments claiming they know other people that this has happened to. His huge promise of being the biggest in a year and winning Grammys never came true. Instead, he had a hurt reputation, he was known for being cocky, he got clowned by Tory Lanez, got clowned on by Nav, got exposed for scamming and stealing a little peep verse, and caught doing a bunch more bad stuff. So after this, Dax had to figure out how to recover. You're insane. You're in pain. I cannot tell by what you're saying, but... Ironically enough, I think the song Death to Mumble Rap actually marked the death of the YouTube rap era. Everyone on that song and many artists in that community slowly began declining and people's interest in that scene began waning. But somehow, Dax remained popular. He had a strong core fan base consistently helping him pull in over a million views per video. And he even had huge songs like Dear God. He released the EP I'll Say It For You and got some decent streams. But outside of his fan base, he had just as much hate as he had love. Logic is another artist with a similar situation to Dax, just on a larger scale. Logic has seen immense success in the music industry, more success than 99% of artists will ever see, yet he is constantly mocked on the internet, and Dax seems to be in the same boat. In 2021, Dax released the album Pain Paints Paintings, and it was received very poorly. It featured artists like Tom McDonald, Lecrae, Yellow Wolf, Clever, and more. Also, as many of you probably know, Tom McDonald is disliked and found corny by many rap fans, which didn't help Dax's situation at all. It got decent streams from his fans, but similarly to Logic, the general public was not big on the album. On Rate Your Music, it got a 1.2 out of 5 from 112 ratings, and on Album of the Year, it got a 17 out of 100 from 108 ratings. It had reviews like, as expected, 
corny and unlikable garbage. Good job, Dax, you clout chasing numbnut. And I promise this is the worst album I have ever heard. Even the title and cover art for the album are viewed as corny. For example, look at the artistry when Kendrick does an introspective album with songs like Mirror, and then compare it to how Dax does it. Regardless, that wasn't all that would happen that would tarnish Dax's public image. He continued doing things that many onlookers outside of his fan base found extremely corny. Like in 2022, when he did the open verse challenge for his song, Joker. You're insane. You're in pain. I can tell by what you're saying, but... This obviously was pretty cringy, led to a ton of memes and some hilarious duets from some other TikTokers, and it was super viral. Someone once asked on Reddit why Dax is so hated, and many users were able to sum up the general consensus on him. Has anyone mentioned he's corny yet? Very cheesy, lyrical, miracle, spiritual, individual type of rapper. Dude can rap his ass off, he's just too tryhard and sweaty. And I looked at the cover art for Joker and listened to about 20 seconds of it and found out why. He's corny. The thing is, Dax was always the same artist. He never changed. He never became corny. He always was. However, people just had a different perception of him because of the time. Many of his fans seem to have grown out of the lyrical schmirical style of rap and began understanding actual artistry, which Dax wasn't too great at. But Dax was persistent with his output, feeding the fans he did have, and plotting to grow despite the corny YouTube rapper box he was placed in. They will basically reinvent themselves, their sound, their messaging, their everything. And Instead of trying to escape the corny rapper box that he was placed in, it seems like Dax leaned into it. Whether or not it was intentional, Dax continued putting out the same sort of music with the same subject matter, although he sort of began pandering it to a different audience. Instead of trying to market his music to a younger audience by making bangers and talking about how he's the best rapper, Dax shifted his target demographic to a different audience that isn't so quick to call out corniness. God, it basically distills everything I hate about uh, some artists operating within the YouTube rap scene. They will basically reinvent themselves, their sound, their messaging, their everything in order to pander to a specific group of people who they have in mind for the song. And for whatever reason, this audience usually ends up falling under the umbrella phrase of, well, I don't usually like hip hop, but this? On March 11th of 2022, Dax released the song Dear Alcohol which became a huge song and has over 89 million views on his YouTube channel. It's his biggest song by far, and it reached a slightly different audience. Dear Alcohol is a country rap type of song where he sung with a bit of country twang about alcoholism. The song had comments like, I'm seven days sober today. It might not sound like much, but from someone that drank every day for the last 10 years, it's huge. It's a battle every day, but it's a battle I'll fight. It's clear that this song, his biggest song ever, attracted a slightly different fan base than he had before. He continued releasing music, some rap songs, some not. Like his song, To Be A Man, which again was more of a country song. That song was pretty huge and eventually even got a remix with the popular singer-songwriter Darius Rucker. For example, in his latest song, Eternity, he detailed pretty obvious things about how life is so brief, we all die, it isn't that impactful on the earth, so we should just live in the moment. Very existential stuff, but nothing profound. However, this sort of music means much more to his newer audience than it did to his previous one. The video has comments like, as I am on the brink of retirement, this hit me hard. And I am in my mid fifties and I have never felt music like what you put out. Dax continued to be blessed and a blessing to others. So it's clear that Dax has developed a different audience than he had back in 2018 and 2019, an audience that doesn't care as much if he's the hardest or best rapper out now. They just want to hear songs that speak to them and that is what Dax is doing. They also probably aren't aware of some of the scummy stuff Dax did a while ago, so that probably helps. So whether or not it was intentional, Dax's embracing of a new audience has helped him gain over 4 million subscribers in the past 4 years. His song Dear Alcohol went gold and debuted at number 28 on the US Hot Country Songs charts. He also got nominated for Breakthrough Artist of the Year at the 2023 Canadian Music Awards, and he even won Top Selling Canadian Single of the Year with Dear Alcohol. It's clear that for better or for worse, sticking to his guns and doubling down on his corniness has helped Dax become more successful than he ever has been before.